Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint whimsical swing summer scene. So we have a tree and a lake and a pretty swing and a full moon and little fireflies. Fun painting you can do for the summer or any time of year. We're going to go ahead and get started right away. I'm using an 11 by 14 inch canvas. It's a canvas size that I use mo for most of my paintings. And the first thing I want to do is divide my painting in half. So I'm going to take my T-square ruler, line it up to the edge, estimate where the middle is. Sometimes I just use my fingers to estimate. If you want to measure, you can measure it. It's just doesn't matter. But just take that, line it up, and take your pencil, and you're going to draw a horizontal line across the canvas. So now we have a um, the sky is at the top and the water area, ground area is at below. And I'm going to grab this brush. This is a three-quarter inch flat wash brush. I have phthalo blue and titanium white on my palette. I'm going to dip my brush in the water, kind of tap it dry. I want some of that water to distribute into the phthalo blue so that it'll thin it out a little bit. I'm gonna start at the top and paint left and right strokes using the full width of my brush. And this is gonna be the darkest part of the sky. So the sky is gonna get a little bit lighter as we go down, but for now it's just gonna be solid phthalo blue. I'm gonna fill up half of this sky area with that dark blue. I'm just gonna call it dark blue from now on. Um, and so go about the halfway point. It should be a somewhat thin layer. I'm loading my brush in a little bit of water and kind of using that to um, help the flow of the paint. So it shouldn't be super thick. But just a tad of water will be enough to get that paint to flow across the canvas. Of course, you want to keep it nice and even. Try to keep the color consistent throughout and paint it just to the halfway point. When you get to about the halfway point, do not rinse your brush off. If it, if you need to wipe it off, you can, but there's not a lot of blue paint on my brush. Anyway, I'm gonna grab white on my brush. So that white is gonna mix with that phthalo blue when I paint that. And this is the transition area. It's the part where our dark blue is going to turn into a lighter blue with that little bit of white paint on the tip of my brush. I'm gonna brush over that area several times to get that white to blend with that dark blue. And I can brush it up into that darker blue as well. Right here, that transition area, I'm just gonna keep painting over it and over it, working that paint until our colors mesh nicely together. And we have a transition of the dark blue at the very top, and now it's just getting lighter as we go to the bottom. So our horizon line is that line we drew. We don't wanna paint below that line, and that is the lightest part of our sky. It's not gonna turn completely white, but it is gonna be a lighter blue. So you have the lightest blue at the bottom, and it transitions up to a darker blue at the top. If you want, you can add a bit more white down there, but keep in mind that the water area, that's the water that's going to be below that horizon line, is going to be a much lighter blue. So we don't want to get this to be too light. We, we want it to be light, but not too light. And so I'm just going to blend this in. If you accidentally paint under your horizon line, that is okay, because we can always adjust that later. I'm just going to gently brush that up to the sky, but I don't want to make, I don't want a lot of white at the very top. It should be nice and dark at the top. So we have a gradient of our dark blue to a light blue in the sky. And we're going to transition now to the water. So I'm not going to rinse my brush because I'm going to use the same colors in the sky for the water, but a different technique. I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm going to start with white this time. So there's still blue on my brush, and when I do this, it's going to turn into a lighter blue again because that blue is still on my brush. So I grabbed a little bit of white on the tip of the brush, and I'm going to go ahead and define my horizon line. I'm using the very tip of my brush, that flat tip part, so I can get in there and get that line in, that horizontal line. I want to make sure that line is horizontal and not wavy or anything like that. So just get in there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just as horizontal as possible. Um, so you want to just really define that and see the difference. It should be a much lighter color than the bottom part of the sky. That way it will stand out. Go down about uh, three quarters of an inch to an inch. Now I'm going to continue with this light color. Um, 
and it's going to create a vertical column area because our moon is going to be in the sky center to the left and the brightest part of our water is going to be below the moon. So I'm taking my white, um, which is turning into light blue because there's still blue on my brush, and I'm doing these left and right strokes just in a vertical column in that area. So um, I'm using mostly the tip of my brush to make thinner strokes versus in the sky, I use the full width to make thick strokes. In this water, I'm doing thinner strokes and that's gonna help create water texture and it's also gonna make it look different from the sky. So when you look at the painting, you can tell, okay, that's the sky, obviously, and that's the water because the strokes look kind of different. Then I'm gonna grab more of the darker blue on the tip of my brush and continue that technique of using the tip of the brush to create thinner strokes on the left and right side of that lighter area. A little bit of water just to get it to flow a bit. And I'm just gonna, um, there's still white on my brush, so it's okay if that white kind of blends with it, but we ideally we want this part to be a little bit darker so that the lighter part, reflection part of the water is lighter. So I'm just gonna continue to do the thin strokes left and right, occasionally brushing over that middle part. Grabbing a little bit of white too is okay, taking that white, kind of brushing over. Um, the trick is you wanna kind of leave it unblended because if we keep going over these, it's just gonna all turn into the same color blue. We want just a variation of the light, lighter blue to go into the darker blue and um, just keep filling up that canvas area. So try not to leave any canvas showing through, but keep using the tip of your brush to create the kind of water stroke that looks like um, a little bit of water texture with a thin stroke. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the left side of the reflection. So grabbing that thalo blue, a little bit of white too. It's okay if that reflection white blends back in with that darker blue, that is okay. And also you can grab a little bit of white. It's okay if you take that blue and brush over the white area. You just wanna keep your reflection area of the water brighter and just fill up your canvas. I'm gonna load my palette with some more titanium white in here and I'm gonna just take this white and use it to fill up any blank canvas spots that may be showing through. Again, keep in mind that that middle reflection should be the brightest part of the water, but adding a little bit of white in this area And then over on the right side as well, just very gently using the tip of my brush. I'm not pressing hard at all right here. I'm, I'm doing this very, very gently. So the tip of the brush is just lightly brushing the canvas. Grabbing some more phthalo blue now, or dark blue. And going back over, again, trying not to over blend the colors, trying to keep that texture in there with those thin strokes. And then I'm gonna wipe my brush and grab some of that white and add another coat of white right there in the center to make sure that part is super bright in the middle. Next, I'm gonna rinse my three quarter flat. We are done with this brush for now. Um, I'm gonna do some stars next. So I normally do the toothbrush for stars, but I wanted to change it up a little bit for this tutorial. Um, I'm not done with this brush. I'm actually gonna load the brush in the white. I'm gonna use the brush to tap another brush to create the star effect. Um, this one gives kind of a different style of stars. I do prefer the toothbrush, but Sometimes this works too. So you load the brush in a little bit of the white, little um, some wa slightly watered down. You wanna test it on a different surface first to make sure you're not gonna do splots like I just did right there. Um, but this is good because this is something common that happens a lot. So if this happens to you, uh, just take a baby wipe or a damp towel. Oh, don't do that. Take a baby wipe or a damp towel, wipe it off. I actually 
wipe some of that blue off, but then I could just add some blue in there. And not even noticeable. So if you do the splatter thing, and even with a toothbrush, sometimes you get the big chunks of splats on there for the stars. It you get a chunky piece and you want to wipe it off right away with the wet wipe and it should come off. So that's all I'm doing. It's just slightly watered down white. You're just tapping the brush against another brush and it's creating the splatters. And that's for the stars. Later on when we add the tree and the moon, we can go back in and add more stars where we want more stars to show up. But for the most part, that's a good amount of stars. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. So I'm gonna demonstrate the moon next. So for this moon, I recommend finding a random three inch circle somewhere in your home. Uh, this is a glass cup that happens to be three inches in diameter. So I'm gonna put in the upper left area of the sky, about two fingers down, about three fingers to the right and about four fingers above the horizon line. So upper left, if you want to measure exactly, you can do two fingers, three fingers, four fingers, um, or just somewhere in the upper left area of the sky. I'm using a chalk pencil to trace my circle, and that's gonna be super helpful because we want our moon to be a circle, unless you want to do a crescent moon, which would probably be really pretty too. Anyway, so I trace the moon with my circle, and next, I'm going to use a round brush to fill it in. So this is a number eight round brush. And I'm going to freshen up my titanium white on my palette because I don't want any blue in it. It's got to be pure white. And But I will freshen up my blue because we'll do moon texture with that blue later. But for now, we're going to take our white and load it with the brush. And very, very simple. I'm just going to paint this circle in. So. Um, my strokes are going circular. It really doesn't matter the direction of your strokes for this circle. You're just literally painting it in solid. Just be really careful along the edges. Um, your strokes might be sometimes <laughs> harder than you think to paint a circle, and especially when, when you get to the lines and try to fill that in. You want to get as close to your line as possible without going outside of the circle, and sometimes it gets kind of tedious painting a circle but you're just gonna go ahead and paint that in solid white. I'll be painting the moon beams next. So there's a, a kind of a light glow around the moon. So what, I, what, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my towel and wipe my brush off. So there's only a small amount of paint on my brush. I'm gonna test this out first. It should be very dry, scratchy, translucent. If it's too opaque and solid, it's not going to look the greatest, but I'm gonna just dry brush these moon beams around the moon. So dry brush means no water in that paint. It's dry, there's barely, barely any paint on my brush. And sometimes I have to press hard to even get it to come off the brush. But it should be enough to where it kind of shows over that blue, very translucent. Um, might be kind of bright closer to the moon and then it just kind of fades out into the sky. So that'll create the effect of the glowing moon beams around the moon and also complement the reflection very well too. So I'm gonna demonstrate moon texture next and I'm gonna grab phthalo blue, a little bit of white on my brush. I always start at the bottom for moon texture and it's just little uh, abstract, little X strokes textured strokes, expressive strokes, kind of going in all different directions. Um, I do it mostly in the middle, kind of in blotches, um, but I don't do it on the very edge of the outer diameter of that circle. 
So, and I vary that darkness. So a little bit more darker blue in some areas. So some of the blotches are a little bit darker. And literally I'm just taking the brush and just tapping it and creating different textured areas and blotches. I'll dot it in some areas. I'll do little X's in some areas. Some areas will be a little bit darker and I'm just blotting it all throughout. I don't wanna get rid of all that brightness and all that white. So there's some areas that are super, super bright white, some areas not so super bright white, a little bit darker. And so you can vary the tint of your blue by adding more white to it, adding um, less white. So you have some variation in the darks and lights. And um, there's just some simple blotches, simple texture in the moon. Um, don't make it too complicated. Um, I want to do like a little crater thing here. So I'm going to add a little bit more white in there. I'm going to just add some white blotches towards the bottom, kind of over my blue blotches. And then right here, I'll wipe my brush off so it's just the white. I'm going to take that and do these lines, these radiating lines, kind of like an asterisk sort of thing going on here, a little a crater. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but it's kind of different. And then what I like to do after I do my moon texture is just take white on the tip of my brush and outline the outer part or the inner part of the circle. We're not outlining the outer part, we're outlining the inner part. So that is the brightest part of our moon. So we have a full diameter of just white around the moon. And that really kind of brings out the contrast in that moon, makes the edge of it super bright. So I'm just taking that brush and re-outlining the center, trying not to make my circle look all lopsided here at the top. And then you can always fix it up with moonbeams if you need to add some more moonbeams on the outer part of your circle. There we go. So we have a moon in the sky. And we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. I'm done with my round brush for now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create the land area on the bottom of the canvas. So I'm going to load my palette with the color raw umber which is very dark brown and i'm going to grab my three-quarter flat brush back a little bit of water um, on the brush distribute it into the paint so it's nice and flowy i'm just going to take this bottom area it's about an inch and um, it's not exactly flat it's kind of wavy or yeah um, an uneven land area and I'm just going to define that area at the bottom. That's where our tree is going to be situated on and our grass and little yellow flowers. And so I just went ahead and painted the ground area. I'm going to make this on the left a little bit higher using the tip of my brush to define it. And go ahead and rinse. So we'll be doing the tree next. And I'll be using the number eight round brush for the tree and also the same color of that raw umber color. So with this tree, if you feel more comfortable drawing it with the chalk first, you can definitely do that. I'm going to draw it with the paint. So I'm going to mix a little bit of white into that raw umber color. It's going to lighten that brown a bit. So let's say about four parts brown to one part white to lighten that brown just a little bit. A little bit of water just to slightly water that paint down and help with the flow. Twist it to get that paint right there on the tip. I'm going to use the tip of my brush to start drawing this tree out. So we have our trunk of the tree on the bot on the land, of course, our um, or the roots of the tree on the land. 
and our trunk is a little bit wavy. I'm using the tip of the brush. So this branch right here is super important because that's where our swing is gonna be on and our swing is directly under the moon. So we wanna make sure that we have the perfect branch right here for a swing. Now I'm going to make this branch go very horizontal under that moon. And in fact, it might be easier to paint that branch first and then have it go ahead and meet your trunk of the tree. I'm gonna get some more brown on my palette here. And then here's the other side of the trunk. So I'm just loosely painting this out. I'm not gonna do solid yet. I'm using the tip of the brush to sketch my tree out very loosely. And we're gonna have a couple branches here. So this branch is in place, this horizontal branch, and so it's gonna attach to some other branches here. These branches can go anywhere they want. They're not as important because they don't need the swing. So you can paint those branches going in different directions. I'm not painting anything over the moon just yet. I want my moon to be completely visible. Later on, I'll have maybe a few branches and some leaves cover the moon, but we wanna leave our moon like it is for now. And I'm gonna take this horizontal, so I'm just, gradually adding to my tree here, connecting the branches to the main trunk, and I can start filling it in solid, so my main trunk can be filled in. We have one, two, three, four branches that are coming out from the main trunk. And then I like to grab a little bit of white on my brush too, a little bit of that lighter brown. Kind of varies the color. We'll be doing some more highlighting here in a little bit, but it's kind of nice to have some variation in that brown so it's not all solid and kind of define some of those roots on the bottom. So I'm just filling this in. And then some of my other main branches, we can go ahead and paint some smaller branches coming out from those main branches. I'm not gonna do a lot of branches because there's gonna be a lot of greenery covering most of this area. And also I didn't wanna make it too complicated of a tree. So just a few simple branches, a few smaller ones that are coming out from the basic ones. Nothing too complicated. If you're feeling brave, you can have a branch overlap your moon a little bit. Um, I wouldn't cover too much of that moon, but just a little bit, it kind of helps to make it look like we have some overlapping going on in this painting. Just a, I did one little branch kind of peeking over the moon. And then I'm gonna do some highlighting here. Now that um, it, it helps it that that brown is still wet. So when I grab this white, it's gonna blend easily with that brown. Um, if you need to mix a lighter brown on your palette, that could work too. But I'm only doing this on the left side of the tree. So just gently brushing, making some textured strokes on the left side of that tree and kind of blending it back into the brown so that the light from the moon is hitting some of the left part of those branches. So I'm just very gently brushing the left side of those branches. And then if you want, you can do some lighter color at the top of this branch over here. Maybe a little bit, nothing too fancy or drastic, just a few light highlights here and there on the tree. Gives the tree some more depth too, so it's not all too flat. Oh, I mean, the trick with these branches is to really have your paint nice and flowy, so a good ratio of water in that paint to get it to water down a little bit. Really helps control the branches. Um, controlling the brush is helpful too, so you're pressing hard for thicker strokes and you're kind of releasing the pressure of the brush to get your strokes to go thinner. And just a lot of practice with these trees. The next thing I'm going to demonstrate is the swing. So we're gonna draw our swing in first. Highly recommend to do that. Um, go ahead and rinse my brush off. Load my palette with Mars Black. So I'm gonna use my white chalk pencil to draw the swing in and I'm gonna use a ruler as well. The ruler is helpful to get your line vertical. Again, if you want to just draw, um, paint it in without drawing, that's fine. I kind of wanted to be a, a bit of a 
perfectionist about this here, but I'm just taking my ruler, lining it up to the can the edge of the canvas. I want my swing directly under that moon. So I'm just gonna draw two vertical lines under the moon that they're gonna be attached to that tree branch, of course. And you can go as far down as you want. I went um maybe there's five inches, four inches above the land with the swing. You can just estimate it. Doesn't really matter. Um, and then the width of the swing is almost the same width of the moon. It's probably a little bit less than the width of the moon. I'm just taking this line and making it a little bit more vertical. And then the horizontal part of our swing. So I'm gonna line that up to the edge of the canvas. I'm gonna do a horizontal rectangle shape. I know it's kind of hard to see because it's white chalk over a light area, but you'll definitely see it when I start painting it in. And so the swing is wider on both sides than the string. There's about maybe a quarter of an inch piece hanging out on both sides of the swing. So I'm gonna use a round brush for this. You can use any brush you feel comfortable with. This is a number four round brush. If you need to use a smaller one, you can use a smaller one. I'm gonna slightly water that black down a bit and get that black right there on the tip because I know I need to paint a very thin line right now. And I'm just going to start at the top. So we have the piece of our swing that's tied to the tree. I'll go ahead and just paint those pieces. So just do like a little tiny curved line with that black so that it looks like it's hanging or tied to the tree. And then we're gonna just going to go ahead and paint the thin vertical string line. You can start at the top or the bottom, wherever you feel is most comfortable. I'm gonna start at the bottom. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. If it's a little bit wobbly or wavy, that is fine. I'm not going to, I mean, it's a painting. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Um, but the chalk lines are helpful so you can kind of get a guide of um, trying to get that line to be as vertical as possible. And then I'm going to paint the horizontal part of the swing in. It's a wooden swing, so I grabbed some of that raw umber color. Of course, there's still black on my brush, so it's super dark. And I'm just going to outline my rectangle shape and then fill it in solid. And I want to give it some wood texture. So I'm actually going to grab some white on my brush. And if you need to wipe or rinse the brush because there's too much paint, you can do that. But grabbing that white and just doing these horizontal strokes with the white, the white's blending with a little bit of black and that brown and leave it unblended and streaky. That's going to give it that wood texture. So really simple wooden texture. I'm going to extend it just a bit on the right to make it look more even. Then I'm going to have it look like the rope of the string of the swing is going through. So I'm going to do these two little bumps on the top part of the swing where a rope meets the wood thing. And then two tiny little pieces just kind of hanging down from the bottom of the swing. So it looks like our rope is attached to that wooden piece. And I can do two little bump pieces below. A little bit of texture lines on the swing, but I don't want to over blend it because I don't want it to all turn into the same color. So we have our swing in place. If there's any residual chalk lines, you can erase that with a chalk pencil, or a chalk eraser, or a regular eraser. Or you can wait till the painting's dry and erase any other chalk lines that may be there. And then I want this kind of vine thing coming from the rope. So I'm taking some white, a little bit of brown. This one ended up being a little bit more white. And I'm just doing this wavy line down the, the, the rope. So it looks like there's kind of a vine ha hanging from the swing, kind of gives it that whimsical look, or maybe it's just the way the rope is, but it, it looks pretty to do that and also it helps to compensate for if you did a vertical line and it's not so vertical the little wavy line kind of makes up for it so we're going to do grass next and the grass color i'm using or the color green i'm using is hooker's green hue permanent and you're going to need yellow as well 
um, because there's little flowers in this grass, but I'm not gonna load the yellow on my palette just yet. I'm gonna start out by mixing white with the green to make it into a lighter green. And I'm using my number four round brush for this. You, of course, you can use any brush that you feel comfortable with. Um, if you wanna use an angle brush for the grass, you can do that. Um, but I'm just taking this and I'm making some really simple little um, textured grass lines in this area with that green. And I'm just painting different angles, going in different directions. And of course, our base layer is this dark brown. So the white, mixing the white into the green will help that grass stand out versus if we just did the green and nothing else, that dark green wouldn't show up very well. So that's why I mix the white into it. So I'm just painting grass, very simple grass, just kind of all over that area. So different angled strokes, textured strokes all throughout. Um, you can vary your colors. You can have some with darker green, some with lighter green. So kind of all over that area. You can have some blades of grass overlap the bottom part of the tree and over your roots if you would, if you want. Then I'm gonna rinse my brush and do some silhouettes of longer grass, maybe some cattails since we're next to a lake. Um, gonna load it in just black this time and towards the back of our land area, I'm going to do more of these longer grass blades and then I can make some of them look like they're pieces of cattail. Gives a little bit of a variety and also the silhouette makes some pretty contrast and texture in that area. And we can do some that are kind of peeking up behind the roots of our tree as well. So just some longer grass blades. You can even have some grass blades that are bending down in different directions. There are little yellow flowers in the grass area, and I love the pops of yellow in this painting. It just provides some really pretty contrast against all the blue that we have. So I'm gonna load my palette with primary yellow and um, titanium white. You can use any yellow if you, if you wanna use a cad yellow or um, it's up to you. So it doesn't really matter what yellow you use, but I'm gonna mix about equal amounts of white and yellow together. And I'm just gonna take that and just kind of do little dots all throughout the grass area towards the back. And then, so just little dots. And you can, you can grab some more white on your brush and do some little white flowers if you want and just yellow and just do little yellow flowers. And then some of these that are kind of closer to the bottom have petals. So you can just take the tip of your brush and create some very, very tiny, tiny petaled flowers. We don't have to paint the stems of these flowers. So just pops of little yellow flowers all throughout the grass area. Next, I'll be demonstrating how to do the little fireflies. And if you've followed some of my recent paintings, several of them have had this technique of using the finger to create like kind of a blurry light. So I just take my index finger and load it in a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. Wipe it off a little bit. You don't want a lot of paint on your finger because when you press and create this sort of smeared circle, you don't want a lot of paint on your brush because you really want it to be see-through um, when you make that little mark on the canvas. So yes, it is okay to use your finger as a paintbrush to create special different techniques. Um, in this case, it makes for great fireflies. Um, then I'm gonna take my brush and load it in just the white. And I'm gonna make a small little dot in each of these circles. And it's gonna create the effect that we have a glowing lightning bug firefly kind of 
floating around in that area adds to the whimsical effect of the scene. I'll go back in here and add some more flowers because you can never have enough flowers in any painting. If you notice, there's also a heart etched on the tree. So I'm just going to use white to do that. Paint a little heart over here on the trunk. Make sure that white is right there on the tip for that small little stroke that you need to make. If you want, you can even do initials or a little cupid arrow going through the heart. It's up to you. And so maybe add, so I have white already on my brush, a few little texture lines in there. Don't want to make that swing too bright because then we won't have enough contrast showing through, but just a little quick highlight. Um, next, we got to add some leaves to our tree. It's a summer scene. There would definitely be green leaves in our tree. So I like to use this brush. I call it a scruffy butt brush. It's not actually called a scruffy brush. Um, it's called a bristle brush. It's got the natural bristle hairs to it, the scratchy texture. I loaded it into that hooker's green color and I'm just taking the end of it and dabbing it and it's creating the leaves of the tree. So I'm dabbing it on the tips of my branches and kind of going in clusters in different areas. And so I'm doing the dark um, to light first. So no white or and your yellow or anything and it's just the green color, just the hooker's green color for now. Um, I'm just dotting it. So if you don't have a bristle brush, you can use Q-tips for this technique. So you can get like three or four Q-tips and bundle them together and use that to dot it. It'll kind of create a different style, but still kind of the same technique. Um, I got this brush at Michael's, just a pack of these bristle brushes. I hardly ever use them unless I'm doing texture because of the natural hairs are really scratchy and wiry and you can't really do a lot of smooth painting with them, except when you need to um, do some scratchy texture like I'm doing now. Um, just be really careful with the leaves that are overlapping the moon. You don't want to take away too much from your moon. So I did it very, very subtly covering the moon. Um, I liked a little bit of leaves covering the moon, but not too much. And I'm just kind of doing clustered, bundled areas of that green kind of all throughout. So that's the green layer. I'm going to um, make us another layer. I'm gonna add some white to my brush and kind of blend it in. I don't want it to be pure white because we're not doing snow on the tree, um, but this is a lighter green and I'm just gonna go in and add my second layer. So this is going to create some depth in our leaves because our green is lighter. And um, I'm not going to cover up all my dark green and there's not gonna be as much um, of this light green as the dark green because it is a night painting and so it's mostly supposed to be dark in this area anyway. It's kind of nice to add, do color instead of just a silhouette of a tree. So just a few little dabs of that light green kind of all throughout and then I even add some yellow into this. So uh, mixing a little bit of yellow into your green and then doing some dabs of that color with the yellow. You can do that to create some different variation of green. So it's kind of fun to mix colors. And I'll just go ahead and do another layer of this. So and you can make your tree as full or not full as you want, depending on how much sky you want to have show through. This step does take quite a bit of time depending on how much leaf texture you want. But I'm gonna go ahead and go silent here while I finish up my tree leaves and then I'll let you know what the next step is after that.
Okay, our painting is almost finished. I'm going to do some final touch-ups in this. Um, go ahead and rinse my bristle brush off. I'm going to grab my round brush again. This is the number four round brush. And I want to brighten up this area right below the moon. So I'm just going to create some pure white strokes just in the area right under the moon. It's going to really brighten that part up and really add to the glowing reflection in the water. And then um, I'm going to do some more stars in the sky as well. So earlier when we did the splatter stars, there's stars in there, but we really want to have some of these stars twinkling through our tree and wherever there's a clearing in the sky. Um, but I'm just taking my round brush and doing little dots, little clusters of dots where I want my stars to show up. And if we want to do like a diamond or an asterisk star, um, this is a, a really small brush. This is a five zero round brush. So I want to create some um, twinkling stars so I can do like um, little X and lines so, or an asterisk sort of line star or I can do a diamond one. I can do a vertical line and a horizontal line and do some very, very thin, very thin lines. Um, kind of tedious to do with that little tiny brush. Um, if you have a white paint pen, it's easy to do those kind of stars with the paint pen. So just do a nice variety of little dots and clusters of stars all throughout. Really adds to the whimsical effect of this painting. I am going to go silent here again while I zen out to adding all my twinkling stars all throughout the sky. This painting tutorial is coming to its conclusion. I'm going to go ahead and sign my name in the lower right with that 5-0 round brush and titanium white. I hope that you enjoyed watching me paint. If you painted along with me, I hope you enjoyed painting this whimsical summer swing painting with me too. Thanks for watching.